Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing our Sun Quan's Messy Inheritance series with episode 2, titled Sun Deng, the Eldest Son. Now last time we introduced all seven of Sun Quan's sons, but when it comes to inheritance in ancient China, the tradition dictates that the eldest son from the main wife shall be the first in line to inherit. But as none of Sun Quan's seven sons were from any of Sun Quan's main wives, the default then simply goes to the eldest son, who in this case is Sun Deng. Born in 209 to a mother who was too low class to even become Sun Quan's concubine, Sun Deng was raised instead by Lady Xu, who was the main wife at the time. The two of them would go on to share a close bond despite Lady Xu's divorce with Sun Quan in 212, as she would continue to care for the young Sun Deng while Sun Quan left to build his new capital in Jianye. And because Sun Deng grew up far away from his father, we do not know much in terms of historical records for his childhood. By the time he is mentioned again in the history books, it would be the year 221, when Sun Quan became a vassal to the newly formed kingdom of Wei, right as Liu Bei launched his Yilin campaign to avenge the death of Guan Yu. As part of that vassalization, Sun Quan was named to become the king of Wu and forced to move his capital from Jianye to Wucheng. The then 12-year-old Sun Deng was also given a marquis title and an imperial court advisor role as it was expected for the heir of the vassal to move and reside in the Wei capital of Luoyang as a political hostage to ensure the vassal's loyalty. But vassalage to Wei was never genuine so Sun Quan declined Sun Deng's titles and claimed that Sun Deng was too sick to travel to Luoyang. And in the next few months, Wei would repeatedly request for Sun Deng until war finally broke out between the two sides, as Liu Bei's defeat at Yiling made both sides realize that neither side now benefited from the vassal relationship. And naturally with this war, Sun Deng would no longer have to leave Wucheng, as his next appearance in the history books would be his grand wedding to Zhou Yu's daughter in 225, as his coming of age at 16 also meant he was going to become a husband, which was normal at the time. His wife would be Zhou Yu's only daughter and youngest child. Her name was rumored to be Zhou Chu, and her mother was rumored to be Xiao Qiao, although there are no concrete historical documents to prove either. Regardless, her marriage to Sun Deng was a big deal in Wu, as Sun Quan had Sun Deng's grand tutor, Cheng Bing, personally travel to Wu Commandery to escort Lady Zhou to Wucheng for the wedding. Now, Cheng Bing was a well-respected Confucian scholar who had first taken refuge in the Jiao province where Shi Xie soon recruited him. But due to his fame, Sun Quan would swoop in and steal him from Shi Xie with a better offer as he would eventually become Sun Deng's first tutor. However, Cheng Bing would die of old age not long after, so in an effort to give his eldest son the best education possible, Sun Quan not only would go on to pick Zhang Wen as the next grand tutor for Sun Deng, but also select four suitable peers from the sons and grandsons of his officials to become Sun Deng's attendants and friends. And Sun Deng's four attendants would be Zhuge Jin's son, Zhuge Ke, Zhang Zhao's son, Zhang Xiu, Gu Yong's grandson, Gu Tan, and Chen Wu's son, Chen Biao, as their duties included helping Sun Deng study, as well as going on hunts with him to improve his horseback riding and archery skills. Sun Quan was also particularly focused on the study of Han history for his son, Sun Deng, so because Zhang Zhao was a renowned scholar in this field, Sun Quan ordered Zhang Zhao's son, Zhang Xiu, to receive lectures from his father at home during the night before relaying the lecture to Sun Deng at the palace the next day. And despite their status as attendants, Sun Deng always treated them as peers and equals, as they would be allowed to come to the palace in casual clothing rather than former official robes. When out on trips, the five of them would often share the same carriage and sleep in the same room, 
as Sun Deng never held himself in a lofty status despite being the crown prince of Wu. In addition, Sun Deng was a studious and curious student with a particular interest in talented officials, as he once wrote a letter to Bu Zhi asking about the talents of various officials in Wu, and Bu Zhi would write back a detailed analysis of the strength and weaknesses of the 11 top officials ranging from Zhuge Jin to Shi Gan, as Sun Deng was told to trust and rely on them in the future, which Sun Deng took to heart. Aside from learning about talent, Sun Deng also collected talents of his own. In addition to his four attendants, officials such as Xie Jing, Fan Sheng, Diao Xuan, and Yang Dao all frequently met with Sun Deng and were collectively nicknamed the Four Friends of Sun Deng. And in 229, when Sun Quan declared himself as the Emperor of Wu and moved the capital back to Jianye, once again he would leave his sons behind at Wu Chang as he would even leave his court behind with Lu Xun left in charge, while Sun Quan focused more on military matters in Jianye, as he was now preparing for the third, fourth, and fifth attack on Hefei. And during this period, Sun Deng got his first experience to rule as a regent crown prince, as he would shadow Lu Xun every day at court. Then in 232, tragedy struck the Sun family, as Sun Quan's second son and Sun Deng's younger brother, Sun Lu would die of illness at the age of just 20. This hit Sun Quan particularly hard as one of the main reasons that Sun Lu would get sick was because two years prior, Sun Quan had listened to the recommendations of the court and granted Sun Lu a general title and stationed him in Banzhou to help him gain experience in administration and military matters away from the courts much like how Sun Quan had become mayor at just 15 in an effort to help his older brother Sun Ce rule the land. While Sun Lu would do well in these two years at his station, a plague in this area would ultimately claim his life in 232, as he would become the first of Sun Quan's sons to die. Stricken with grief, Sun Quan started to eat less and less, which started to worry the court and the crown prince Sun Deng, who would leave Wu Chang by his own accord as he rushed to his father's side to tend to him. After being comforted by Sun Deng, Sun Quan would recover, and after much pleading from Sun Deng, Sun Quan would allow Sun Deng to stay in Jianye to be by his side moving forward. At this point, Sun Deng fully embraced his crown prince role, as when Sun Quan launched his fifth siege of Hefei in 234, Sun Deng was left behind in charge. During this period, there was a drought that vastly reduced crop yield in the south, which indirectly caused a rise in bandits. But under Sun Deng's fair policies, the bandit issue soon came under control through a combination of sending more troops to combat the bandits and tax reductions to make life easier on the farmers so they do not turn to a life of crime just to make ends meet. While Sun Deng was looking like the next great ruler that Wu would need, Sun Quan's long life became a curse as in 241, Sun Deng would pass away to sickness at the age of just 33 as Sun Quan would experience the death of a son for a second time. On his deathbed, Sun Deng would pen this letter to Sun Quan, pleading with his father to remain strong after his death as Wu still needed its emperor. As this is a rather long letter, I have translated it to the best of my abilities while keeping things brief for you to read at your own pleasure. Now when this letter was delivered to Sun Quan after Sun Deng's death, Sun Quan burst it into tears as he mourned the death of his eldest son and crown prince Sun Deng. And now with Sun Deng's death, our episode also comes to an end, as we'll continue next time with the fracturing of Sun Quan's court as Sun Quan's third and fourth son will now fight for the throne. So hopefully you all enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!